Jurassic! Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this way we're going to cover your two types of photoreceptors, your rods and cones. So as you can see, the bottom half of them looks the same. So it makes them different is what's called their outer segment. So the rod in its outer segment contains uh, the, the, the photosensitive pigment rhodopsin, and your cones are each going to contain uh, photosensitive pigments called opsins, and they're going to differ based on their wavelength. We'll show you that. So your, your cones, they, can, they perceive the three different primary colors, red, green, and blue. But let's, let's show that a little bit more here. So each of these opsins are going to be sensitive to a limited uh, wavelength of light. So you see rods there, the peak sensitivity of that rhodopsin is going to be 498 nanometers. For your three color opsins, opsins for red, it's going to be 564 nanometers, for green, 534, and then for blue, it's going to be 420 nanometers. So each of these cones can see about a hundred shades of color that are, that are within those wavelength ranges. And because we have three, so a hundred times a hundred times a hundred, that means that normal human eyes can register about a million different colors. There are some people that can see more, and then obviously if you're colorblind and you're missing one or more of these cones, you would be able to see a lot less. Some people see the whole world uh, basically in grayscale, which is what what your, what your rods would be able to see. Um, so rods, uh, they, do, they do not register you know, these different colors, but they're very sensitive in, to vision in low light. So your rods are really good in low light at showing you the world in grayscale. You can still see diffuse, you know, diffuse edges, you can still see movement, but you're not going to see much of that fine detail. So if you're, if you're in the dark looking at something and you think you see, it, you see color, it's, it's not. It's, it's actually your, your brain is relying on memories of what color you think things are. It's pretty, pretty cool. So we do kind of see the world in grayscale. So here we see uh, that we have your photoreceptors, your rods and cones, and they're connected to those special sense neurons, the bipolar neurons, that are connected to ganglion cells. So one last thing to say about rods and cones, because the actual ganglion cells that monitor them are different too. So the ganglion cells that monitor your rods are called M cells or magnal cells. They have, uh, they're large, they, 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 so they, they're not very localized, which means you just get general uh, information about the general form of something, motion, shadows, but not clear vision. The ganglion cells that are linked to your cones are going to be called P cells or parvo cells. They have basically smaller areas they're responsible for. There's more of them. So you're going to get a lot more precise information about fine detail, edges, and then obviously the color we talked about. So if you want to see something, turn the lights on and look at it, right? That's the way you look at things. So your, your rods are really good in low light environments and with peripheral vision, but if you really want to look at something or see something, look right at it and make sure you have plenty of light. All right, that's your photoreceptors, your rods and cones. Next, we'll cover the entire visual physiology process. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.